Hello everyone and welcome back to another video of this uh, new series that we have titled uh, The Quranic Affirmation of the Bible. And uh, today's uh, passage that uh, we will be addressing, me and my uh, dear brother Sam Shimon, uh, comes from chapter 12 of the Quran, Surah Yusuf. Uh, verse 111, uh, you can see it on the screen. Of course, I just want to clarify, I mean, there are so many English translations of the Quran, so we did our best to try to pick one that resembles as closely as possible, of course. Uh, but uh, you really, if you want to do uh, uh, the translation of the Quran justice, you have to look at multiple translations. So this one uh, reads, there was, certainly, uh, there, there was certainly in their stories a lesson for those of understanding. Never was the Quran a narration invented, but a confirmation of what was before it and a detailed explanation of all things and guidance and mercy for a people who believe. Sam. Yes, sir. We come across passages all the time that yeah, over and over says again. that the Quran is a confirmation yeah, so that, of uh, what came before it. That's the, yeah. And again, like we did in the session on 1037, here, the English is not as accurate or faithful to the Arabic as it could have been. Now, I don't know which Muslim translation that was, but as you can confirm, because Arabic is your mother tongue, it doesn't simply say confirmation of what was before it. It says, Tasdiqa. Tasdiqa lima bayna yadayhi. Yeah, bayna yadayhi. Again, as we said in the previous session, bayna yadayhi means between his hands, and it's an Arabic idiom, meaning that which Muhammad had access to. In other words, what this chapter is saying is that the Quran confirms the very scriptures that were available at the time of Muhammad in the hands of the Jews and Christians. Now, ironically, this chapter is called Surah Al- uh, uh, Yusuf. Yusuf, yes, I get it confused with Yunus. The reason why I'm smiling is because this is narrating the story of Joseph, the son of Jacob. And even though chapter 12, verse 111 says that this Quran is confirming this story that's in the scriptures that Muhammad had access to. If anyone reads the story of Joseph in Genesis and the story of Joseph in this chapter, you'll see that it's night and day that's and right. that this chapter contains blatant, egregious errors and contradictions with the more accurate account found in Genesis. So that this very chapter is a proof that the Quran is anything but a confirmation of the scriptures that Muhammad had access to, which would be the Holy Bible that we have in our possession today. So what greater proof could a Muslim have for number one, the Quran testifies to the incorruptibility of our Bible. Our Bible is the revelation of God revealed through the prophets and messengers, preserved by God, and number two, that the Quran cannot be revelation because it contradicts that very Bible. That's right. That's right. And by the way, it's not just 1037 and 12111 that says the Quran confirms, and maybe you can elaborate on that verb, sadaqah. What does that mean when it says musaddiqan, tasdiqa, sadaqa? What, what does that mean? It means that it, it's testifying that whatever is there right now at this minute is true. So it's not saying it confirms parts of it, but then rejects parts of it. No, the, the, the language is very clear. It's talking about it as a whole, not partially. Yeah, so then when Muslims tell us, no, the Quran only confirms parts of the Bible, are they getting that from these verses, or are they no, twisting no. these verses and reading into the Quran something it doesn't because teach? Because the Quran could have said, Musaddiqan juz an minha. Hmm. Juz is part of it. You yeah, know, see? the Arabic language is rich with these kind of phrases. And so anyone who's honest to the Arabic would see that the Quran says it confirms all those scriptures in their entirety as they existed at the time of Muhammad. Yeah. For instance, like the Quran sometimes uh, will make a claim that fariqan minhum, talking about few a party of. So the Quran could have used a language like this, juz and ba'd, some, you know, yes. it, it would have been easy for that. Especially when the Quran compla- uh, uh, claims to be a fully detailed revelation in plain Arabic so that people can understand. Obviously, if Allah wanted the Muslims to think that the Bible was corrupted so that only part of it remained intact, he did a very bad job of communicating that. That's right. Because the impression given by these passages is that all of the scriptures in their entirety at the time of Muhammad were the incorruptible, preserved revelations of God. And since those scriptures are identical to what we have today, Muslims, you got to accept the authority of the Bible. Now, just to highlight the fact that it's not one or two verses where the verb is used for confirmation, musaddiqan, tasdiqa, you name it. I'm just going to real quickly go over some other passages that use the same verb. Chapter 2, verse 40 to 41. Chapter 2, verses 40 to 41. O children of Israel, remember my favor, 
with which I favored you and fulfill, fulfill your covenant as I will fulfill my, my part of the covenant. So fear me. Now watch this. 241. And believe in that which I reveal, confirming what you possess. Same verb again. Confirming. Now notice it's clear. What you possess right now. At Muhammad's time, I am sending Muhammad to confirm what you possess. Right. Now, 289. And when there comes unto them a scripture from Allah, confirming what is in their possession. So this Quran is supposed to confirm what is in their position. 291. And when it is said unto them, believe in that which Allah has revealed, they say, we believe in that which was revealed unto us. So the Jews are saying, we believe in our revelation, our scripture. We don't believe in yours. Now notice the response. And they disbelieve in that which comes after, though it is the truth confirming what they possess. In That's other right. words, why won't you accept the Quran when the Quran is saying, what you have is true. This is the revelation of God. I confirm that it is incorrupt, preserved, authoritative. But the Jews could see through that. They say, well, hold on. You're saying our book is the incorruptible, preserved Word of God, but what you're teaching contradicts our book. Therefore, if we follow your advice seriously, we have to reject you because you're not confirming, you're denying by contradicting the testimony of these scriptures. That's right. A couple of more, 297, say, again, Muhammad is ordered to say, 297, who is, enemy, who is an enemy to Gabriel? For he it is who has revealed the scripture to your heart by Allah's permission, confirming what was revealed before it. And then 2101, and when there cometh unto them a messenger from Allah, confirming what they possess, confirming what they possess, a party of those who receive the scripture, fling the scripture of Allah, meaning the Quran, supposedly the scripture of Allah, behind their backs as if they knew it not. What else do you need? I mean, man, I can go on and on and on and on. There's right. verse after verse after verse after verse that says the Quran and Muhammad are sent to confirm, to verify, to bear witness to what you Jews and Christians possess at that time. And all that you possess are the incorruptible revelations of God. I mean, there is no doubt whatsoever that the Quran uh, is is our Muslim friend's worst enemy. The Quran itself. Precisely. Because it's, for the life of me, I, I just don't understand why our Muslim friends are so desperate to try to prove their point of view and ignoring their own primary source here. As a result, it's, it's, it's a pride issue probably. It is uh, uh, being so sold in the lies of many of the so-called uh, debaters and scholars uh, that they follow. I'm not so sure what it is, but um, uh, sadly and uh, shamefully, uh, they are putting themselves in a, in a huge predicament. So thank you, Sam. Uh, as always, uh, it's very helpful uh, that the way you uh, expound uh, in a great depth about these kind of passages. And that's the whole idea why we want uh, you know, our dear brother to be with us, just like we have others as well, because we want you to hear it also from others, not just from me, and especially those who are engaged in a day-to-day, -day, uh, if you wish, debates and um, refutations of arguments as this. Hopefully you'll find this video as much, uh, you know, uh, as helpful, I should say, as the others as well. Until we meet you again in the next video, have a blessed day. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe so that you don't miss future videos. And please consider becoming a patron on patreon.com forward slash Sierra International.